The majority of KISS fans say the 70s represent the band at its best. However, their music production during the mid to late 80s has spawned some massive hits, most of which, despite their typical cheesy 80s vibe, to me, still sound good today. One thing that has always bothered me though is the almost complete lack of bass guitar, either sonically and from a songwriting standpoint, especially on the hit songs that generated the music videos that brought Kiss on MTV and kept them floating even at the lowest of their popularity. The 1982 release, Creatures of the Night, features some good epic bass lines, but after that we had to wait 10 years, pretty much until their 1992 album Revenge to hear Jim back in action. So what happened? During the 80s, Gene Simmons tried to pursue an acting career, and his lack of involvement with the band during this period is common knowledge. Gene would stagger into the studio after not sleeping all night. He was too busy once again making movies or working with other bands. The few songs Gene brought in seemed to have been written by other people, with Gene pasting his name on after the fact. His lack of involvement had become a running joke in the studio, but it wasn't funny anymore. So according to Paul, though Gene was still writing songs and getting writing credits, he wasn't present in the studio anymore. Gene is credited for playing bass in most of the material released during this period. But if you learn and play these songs, and if you are somehow familiar with Simon's style, you just know it's not him. The features that made Kiss's bass lines so iconic during the 70s are all gone. Distortion, slides, the use of octaves and all the beautiful melodic parts just disappeared. Most of the time the bass doesn't even follow the bass drum that much and the fingering is just weird compared to the 70s bass parts. Sometimes it feels like it's not even a bassist playing, let alone a smart and super melodic player like Simmons. Paul Stanley played the bass on songs like Tears of Falling and Let's Put the X in Sex. Bass parts have very little connection with Eric Carr's powerful drumming and provide just basic low frequencies. On other songs like Who Wants to Be Lonely and Thrills in the Night, the bass is provided by American producer and former Plasmatics bass player Jean Beauvoir, who obviously made a point of keeping the bass parts as flat and anonymous as possible. But also on Hide Your Heart and Turn On the Night, which are two of my personal favorites, and where Gene is credited for playing, I don't think it's him. Beside the overall feeling, if you know the bass parts and pay close attention to the music videos, you can just tell he hardly knows the chords. As a result, on most of the Kiss's 80s catalog, the bass is completely buried in the mix and hardly heard at all. This, combined with the weird fingering, makes these songs very hard to learn for any bass player accustomed to Gene Simmons' style. And though this shows that you can make a good rock song even without a strong rhythm section, it's also a shame to think that an incredible drummer like Eric Carr was led to play on these albums with pretty much no bass backup. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you liked this video, if you did please subscribe and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Also let me know what you think of the 80s Kiss catalog by leaving a comment below. Thank you, till the next video.